Right. Congratulations on your purchase uh, him of the Daycorp brand uh, Infinite Cosmic Power version 9.7 billion RXS. Ooh, he sprang for the sport model. Fancy. Uh, terms and conditions, blah, blah, blah. Keep out of reach of kaiju. Ah, here. Installation. Step one, to n times towards product, where n is the maximum number of steps said journey would take. Step two, slash n plus one, step back one step. Ensure installation into fresh world. Oh, bugger that, I'm not starting again. For best results, leave universe plugged in overnight before using to allow gases to settle. Oh no, my dwarves will be a little more gassy. How will I ever notice? Right, now Snot said to expect things to be a bit more spicy, but I'm sure it's nothing we can't handle. Enough messing around. Let's switch it on. And for my first trick, watch as I turn this trickle to a flood. Ah, look at that. With all those water updates gone, we should see a sizable effect on the frames. It might be less satisfying to look at, but it's all for a good cause. Anyway, Kutam Milunudiz Wamid. Welcome to the now running at 400% Dimension of Destiny. You'll note we're over the second barracks, and it's currently filled with little warriors. These are the new squad, named the Smiths of Sinking. I hope that's not a prophetic name. After the last siege, I realised we hadn't sent anybody out raiding, and because of the sieges, I'm not comfortable leaving ourselves without the strong arms of our barricaded nails. So I've thrown some of our less important dwarves, uh, including Erdim, hmm, into the military to fix the issue. Things should be quiet enough for a while, so the fact that they've not all got steel maces yet shouldn't matter. Don't look at me with that tone of voice, this is nothing like with Shorast. He was never trained. Ooh, our rusty skilled stone carver Saigon has gone into a strange mood. She's a dwarf with a very interesting past, having spent her years prior to joining Hammerlock as a midwife. No call for it now, of course, what with dwarven children popping into existence fully formed without the use of any type of waterway, let alone canals. So, yes, she's been at something of a loss here. No really helpful skills, but she's got stories that'd make you wish you didn't have... What is that racket? My word, it's a Nyore! Fighting off the cavern's most recent pathetic attempt at a foray. Its continued survival never ceases to amaze me. It's just a little bird. By beast standards, practically harmless. Yet it rules the caverns with an iron fist. Uh, wing. As time goes by, I find myself hoping that Hammerlock falls before a Nyore does but I've always been a sucker for the Underbird. Keep fighting, you beautiful monster! Ah, Saigon is done. A shale mug named Urith Sheked. The translation of that would be the uh, scars of carnality. As I mentioned, she was a midwife. It's sort of a furry cup. Now, I think the less words I use to describe this, the better. I did attempt to draw it, which is very unlike me, but my pencils melted. Which is interesting, because I didn't know Wood could do that. The worst part for me is the image of coffins she scratched into it. I mean, I get the poetic nature of the piece, birth and death, the cycle of life and all that. Just a little... morbid? I'm no stranger to the dreadful algebra of necessity, but I wouldn't decorate my crockery with it. Thank you, Saigon. Please don't ever make a thing again. 
Oh, look, another little human siege. Oh, maybe not so little. Actually, quite a large. Are those war camels? Okay. We've got 20 fighting dwarves, half of which are sharing one weapon between three. We might be handing over an artifact here. If I'm counting correctly, there's 50 humans. All we can do is send Astesh out to meet with them. Again, worst case, we're losing an artifact here. We've got more than enough of those that we wouldn't give a damn about losing. No, oh, here's old cudgel now, having to dance through the throng just to speak to their leader. The Narrow Sky. That's the chalk bracelet the little Adil made for us. She literally gifted it to Hammerlock, so handing it over now wouldn't result in a bad mood on her part, as far as I'm aware. There are literally no downsides to handing it over. We couldn't have asked for a better result. I mean, there's more than two humans to each fighting dwarf. I'd say that's almost an even fight. Your claim is worthless here. Trade your lives if you must. I've sent the warriors the order to gather a little ways away so they don't get swarmed as they trickle in. Yes, here they come. They're gathered now. Not all of them, can't expect that, of course. Let's send them in. Attack, my beautiful warriors! Um, are we going to do anything? Hello? Maybe the trees are getting in the way. Ah, am I going to have to... No, they're away. Oh, my me, the carnage. Oh, and we've lost someone. No, it's too early. Hold firm, dwarf. Oh, no, and, and, and a third. Oh, snod, have I messed up here? Come on, dwarves. Barricaded nails, hold strong. Four. Five. Oh, damn. It's over. Five dead. Two seemingly very injured. Six dead. Oh, what a mess. Here we are in the hospital watching Tekard rest up. The only member of the barricaded nails to be injured. All other wounded and deceased came from our green warriors in the Smiths of Sinking. Of which I'm very sad to say, Erdim was one. Now I know what you're thinking, but I'm not going to say she deserved it for breaking this poor deity's heart. But thank you for thinking it. And now we can see Kogan has joined Tekkad. He's in a very bad way. Cut up like a stack of A4 card when you ordered A5 in the projects due tomorrow, so you haven't got the time to order more in the right size, and, well, it's just 30 sheets and your uncle's got that fancy paper guillotine. Oh, look, we've got a new baby in the fortress. Oh, me, damn it! The reason I shouldn't bake things the morning after a night out with Snod Beast, Rissemi, Sophie, Pugafi, Lafo, Thilliri has come. The answer to the question, what did I just step in? Oh, Snod, it's all squidged between my toes. Now, I'm not going to lie. The picture I did of it is the tiniest bit stylized. John's kids might watch this. It's in the third cavern layer, isn't it? We might be seeing another bit of beast-on-beast -beast action here. Hard to say. Nuri was rather badly injured by those cave fishmen. Oh, hello, Shorest. Oh, dear, there's... No, Rissemi is backing off. Clever, filthy blob. No, here we go. I guess they just don't make giant blobs of grime and filth like they used to. Or I don't, anyway. Yes, there's his grime. All coated with water now. Weird game, this.
We find ourselves in the quills of shearing, where I arrange the coffins for our fallen dwarves. We've added two to each side of Ral's, of which only three have been filled. I don't know why they've left the last one empty. I check the areas and there's no overlap. Our dwarves must just be... busy? Kind of like this episode thus far. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it had something to do with my new infinite cosmic power. But no, that would be silly. You'll be happy to know we've sent the word out for more migrants. Being down to 37 is scary when the humans can field nearly double that in their sieges. So yes, we've... Did Solon just drop her trousers on Athel's tomb and run away? But... Why... Of all the things I've ever seen in Dwarf Fortress, that one deserves a like and subscribe, surely. Oh, and whilst we're on the subject of self-promotion, it's been ages since I've mentioned the Discord server. Definitely join that. And if you're feeling particularly forthcoming, there's a Crumpet Sounds Patreon too. Though that's there more to save the name for when this nonsense gets bigger. Tin rail in flame? Really? It was a very expensive kitchen. Want to contribute yourself? No, nah, no, nah, I'm good. Here, why have you got that 9.7 billion RXS running silo? They have? Yeah, you've got it set to M for mini, when it should be set to W for... You realise that a reference to a 22-year-old joke? Ah, oh, snod, that makes me feel old. Did you just use your name as an expletive? The I don't know why I thought she'd want a giant crab for Valentine's Day beast Salud Uksu Egg Ngun has come. Can't blame Snod for this one. Didn't feel right to keep it after she said no is it fighting something? Seems to be taking a real beat oh. Well thank me I took the time to draw the damn thing. Looks like the culprit was a cave swallow man or two. And Yori would have wiped the floor with it. We're below the hollow hill, in the tomb I've made for our Count Moldath. Turns out a count is what you get when you're a county. Who knew? I'm planning on adding some silver statues dedicated to Hammerlock in the bottom area. And you can already see we've got nooks dug out for our other noteworthy dwarves to rest with their count. Some of these already have bodies, or bits of bodies anyway. One of which happens to be... Erdim. The dwarves haven't quite understood the purpose of the coffins here, hence the bits not quite being inside, but you can't have everything. And in Erdim's case, we actually don't. There's still bits of her on the surface, I believe. Lovely. Ah, the elves have arrived. Now, fortuitous. I was just thinking we were getting low on caged vermin. Well, don't waste any time. Get yourselves into the trade depot. I'm excited to get my flea circus started. Haha, <laughs> this Maffy's got a trait that just reads, Flights of Fancy. At least the elves know what they're good at. Right, let's get some... Oh, come on! The, oh, snod, grab a cup, what do you mean kill it? Where are we going to find a newspaper big enough? Beast, strabo, dorku, tongmal has come. Why are all these beasts eyeless? I don't remember a blinding spree. It's up on the first cavern layer again anyway, and it seems to be rushing down to where that pink crab was when it died. Off to fight those cave swallowmen, I'd wager. Yes, what did I say? And you know what? If I were a betting man, I think my money would be on the webby beast. Absolutely nothing worse but flames, and at least then you die quick. Oh, it seems to be having trouble. What are these swallowmen made of? Now, now, we didn't actually shake on it, so technically no bet was... <sighs> Do you accept human souls? Can you break a twenty? Oh good, Betha is back. Why are we having diplomatic meetings with these jokers? 
We elves are partial in particular. Cap your tree fells at 25 until we next meet. You know, I'd normally just laugh at this. And I'm still going to. <laughs> but we did cut down an obscene amount of trees a year or so ago and never did anything with the wood, so... Snod it. Why not? No, 56 trees? We can absolutely keep to that figure. And Butcher is a bit strong. We aren't eating them. They're weird creatures, but honestly, besides beds, we barely use any wood. Why would we, when the rock around here is so beautiful and abundant? Thank you, Mr. Cribbis. I was having a bit of a low day on account of the gnomes migrating north for the summer. What? I think it would be best if we kept this relationship professional, though. What? I knew you'd get it. Snod says you was a Jerry hat trick fart, and I says, Nah, I've never heard him gaff once, let alone three times, and who's Jerry? Anyway, good evening to ya, Mr. Crevice. What? Thefin Irumenga. Oh. The day I heard that worm was another word for dragon and just had to make it beast, Galel Las Lemala has come. And it's done a number on poor Thefin. Though quite how dangerous a parasite made of condiment might have been, I don't know. Oh no, don't make my soup a little salty. Now Galel is annoyed choking on smoke underground. Talk about self inflicted. We bought an orangutan! Uh, she's a big girl, and we've got her in the inspired colognes, where I'm sure she's already convincing the dwarves to give her bananas. And not that I think we have any bananas. They're giving her something, anyway. Now, she's in the tavern at the moment, but this is temporary, because I'm planning on building a library somewhere, and for some reason I feel she needs to go in there. Something about that just feels right to me. Can orangutans read? That nah, doesn't matter. She'll make a wonderful mascot for the original sense, anyway. If you imagine the smell of a lavatory carpet, but a bit fruitier, you wouldn't be far off. Inod's gone into a strange mood, and this time you can relax because we aren't going to be interrupted. I turned the ICP down again. Five beasts in one episode. The power on this dang thing. Now, I nods in a particularly good mood because he recently slept in a bedroom, which speaks volumes of his past. But I don't know what sort of mess he can make as his artifact is being made at the mechanic's workshop. It should probably be said that he is not a mechanic. He's a fisher dwarf. And unless fish have changed radically from when I last saw them, I can't imagine what we're going to be getting. Let's give him a minute. Well, it's a mechanism. Moderately surprised there. Udist stumam. Pleat broiled. Bloody snod gibberish. Well, he's created something very complicated, I have to admit that. Not sure how well it'll function with bits of wool and twigs dangling all over it, but maybe it's more of a display piece. Like those motorbike models people make out of nuts and bolts and stuff, that look all intricate but don't actually move. It's not the most valuable piece made in the fort so far, but he's offered it to the fortress, so I'm sure we'll find somewhere nice for it to go. Thank you, I nod. And we're happy you like your bedroom. Ah, here we have a female reindeer. My grating to Hammerlock. I could have followed one of the twenty or so new dwarves that came with her, but no. I decided it would be more amusing to follow the reindeer. She's six years old, has high stamina, and no official position just yet. But this is Dwarf Fortress. If she keeps her massive head down... It's not unlikely that she'd be expedition leader in a few years. Provided she learns Dwarvish, and more importantly, 
can handle her booze. What the snod was I thinking when I recorded this? It's two minutes long. Oh look, she's in the temple. Probably making a big mess. Oh dear. Look what you made me do past me. Oh, the humans of the Olid Monger here. Uneasy after seeing some dead humans? Well, I'd close your eyes before you get any closer. Whoops, too late. Ah, well, at least they spoiled the surprise of what we've been up to recently. Bloody me, three full-size wagons? Oh, this trade is going to be fruitful. Uh, bananas for choice. Ha <laughs> ha. So, yes, I'll get the humans dealt with and then why not? I'll show you what the building's all about in the north. Just give me a second. Right, here it is. The last siege made me all too cognizant of the fact that in reality we have two main forts, and so locking down in the event of an attack is nigh impossible without stranding those few who run between. Now I could have dug a tunnel and just closed the surface off, but I mentioned I wanted to make a library. Well, we're better than in our very own tower. Not to mention that now our grantedly small supply of animals won't need to be sacrificed to the first colossus that deigns to wander in. All told, though it was a large undertaking, with the extra hands from that migrant wave it all went up in the blink of an eye. Looking closer at this area you can see the part I'm happiest with so far. This rock block road that seems to stop at either side of our shallow aqueduct is in fact... A bridge! Uh, with chalk statues to... Well, it's Asmel still. But you know, I found I'm actually happier knowing the dwarves are praying to that multi-legged git. Better the devil you know and all that. So, yes. It's just the starting of a tower for now, but trust me, it shan't take long to get it done. Oh, look who it is. It's our very own Pamela Anderson. Yes, keep running, you. Ah, Meng's back, which is good. We'll get to see the building work from a dwarf's perspective. Good me, we really do need a road. Oh, here we go. So, you can see the workshops we've installed. Lots of trees removed, so we're turning them into blocks for the tar. Oh, and here's the path to the hollow hill, protected on both sides by fortifications. I believe Moldath is... checking inventory? Okay, he's getting drunk in the middle of the day. But that's a Tuesday for dwarves. All the other days too, come to think of it. Ah, here we go. Oh, we're being elevated again. What on destiny too? Never mind. We're requesting some precious metals for more statues and such. Granite clobbers are looking for cloth and leather water skins. I'm going to assume that's pieces of cloth and water skins made of leather. Because I'm no expert, but I'm sure cloth would make a better sieve. Great stuff as usual, Meng. Do be sure to keep your laps of the quills of shearing down to single digits. Crazy dwarf. So yes, Hammerlock and the surrounding lands have become a duchy. Which means that our Count Moldath is actually now a duke. Here he is, carrying the ducal shale boulder of state, all dookie in his ducal pants. The problem now, of course, is that he's going to want a throne room, and the little tomb we've set up for him will no longer suffice. I don't know, give a dwarf a title and he thinks he's worth the rest of the damn book. Thank me for the new tower. We'll actually have somewhere nice to put it all. And we'll get to it next time. When that next time might be is, however, a little up in the air. With the new Adventure Mode update coming on the 17th, I'm not quite sure what we'll be doing with Hammerlock. I can promise you there'll be something released to our usual schedule on the 26th, but what that might be? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Oh, and if you're wondering, this is Cybrek, who's decided to join us at Hammerlock on his own, which I'm sure has nothing to do with the fact he's got the social skills of a gibbon. So yes, while we watch the dwarven traders bring in their wares, I will wish you all a fond farewell for another fortnight. 
keep yourselves safe and healthy. Anu Zeshon, you most wonderful of individuals. Anu Zeshon. So you see it was a misunderstanding. I was talking about the rocks in the game. So you don't think I am beautiful and abundant? Well, I mean, you've got a certain rocky charm, certainly. Keep it in your pants, Mr. C. He's spoken for. Oh, don't you bloody start.